sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart Then I shall bow In humble adoration And there proclaim My God, how great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. In moments like these, I take comfort in the fact that Dave had a sense of humor. I would invite you to bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Holy God, before you, our hearts are open. We have no secrets from you. We bring to you now our joys and our sorrows, our guilt, as well as our successes, Sometimes we forget that life is from you and goes back to you. Sometimes in the midst of our busyness, we fail to remember your will for our lives and your strength that we must rely on each day. And then in moments of grief and sorrow, we return to you and we are reminded of your sure and certain strength in the face of our weakness. We ask that you would help us and heal us, raise us from our sins into a better life, raise us from our sadness into the peace of your presence. We pray you would help us to trust in your kindness now and each day and into the end, into the days in which we join Dave in the kingdom of heaven. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Truly you are one God now and forever. Amen. I would now like to invite Mr. Culpepper to come forward to share a reading. Susanna, thank you so much for allowing me to take part in this ceremony to honor Dave and, and his memory and um, like all of you, I think when I heard this, I was so shocked. You know, I thought, why? Why would we lose such a great guy so way too soon? And a poem came to my mind I shared with Susanna. She asked me to share it today with you all. And um, before I do, though, I, I wish you'd let me just uh, say a few things to the boys, uh, Grace and Zane and Blake. I, too, lost my dad when he was, when I was just very unexpectedly. And, um, it was such a shock. He was my hero. Uh, I idolized him, and, and I wanted to be just like him, and I'm sure you guys feel that way, and I'll tell you, it's totally appropriate because your dad was a superman, great guy, and uh, so talented and uh, such character and, and integrity. Uh, 
you should want to be just like him. And um, I know, I think I'm looking at three chips off the old block. He was a rock. And, uh, and so uh, I know he laid a foundation already for you guys to grow and build a great life upon. And I think part of that foundation is a love for God. And uh, he's a good God. You can always trust him, even through these times that are so hard to understand. And, um, and that's kind of what this poem is about. Um, it, it's called The Struggle. You're going to have some struggles along the way and uh, some trials. But I hope this will encourage you just a little bit and all of you. It, it goes like this. Grayson, in the darkness of your trials, don't cower at your plight. Just face them bravely and have faith. You'll defeat the darkness with God's light. Zane, when you feel the trial will crush you, just let it drive you to your knees. God sends us struggles to make us stronger. So don't doubt, but just believe. Blake, let the struggle fan the flicker of your faith into a flame and never stop your praying, but fight on in Jesus' name. So when the billows of the struggle continue to blow and blow, just remember God's eye, it's on the sparrow, and it's your faithful, fervent prayers that fuel his inferno. For it's him that makes us triumph. His fury consumes all of our enemies, and we cultivate true joy by facing and overcoming. Overcoming adversities. So just run at every giant. God assures you victory. The epic battles can only be won over the greatest of enemies. I think I'm looking at three giant killers down there, David's mighty men. And I want you to know I'll be praying with you and I'll be praying for you. this time, I would like to invite Mr. John Whittington to do a reading.
This is a reading that was shared at Suzanne and David's wedding. Excuse me. The art of marriage, the little things are the big things. It's never being two old, old hands. It's remembering to say I love you at least once a day. It's never going to sleep angry. It's at no time taking the other for granted. The courtship should not end with the honeymoon. It should continue through all the years. It is speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It's not expecting the husband to wear a halo. Or the wife to have the wings of an angel. It's not looking for perfection in each other. It is cultivating flexibility, patience, understanding, and a sense of humor. It is having the capacity to forgive and forget. It is giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow. It is finding room for the things of the spirit. It is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is establishing a relationship in which the independence is equal, dependence is mutual, and the obligation is reciprocal. It's not only It's not only marrying the right partner, it's being the right partner. Thank you, Susanna. At this time, I, at this time I'd like to invite uh, Steve Payton to come forward and share a word. morning. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I'm Steve Payton. Um, or if you're under five foot tall in Maumel, I'm Mr. Steve or Cubmaster Steve. Um, I got to know Dave Jarrett through uh, Cub Scouts and scouting. Um, it was six years ago, I think. Uh, I was in a training and uh, Dave and Chuck Bolin and Eddie Bowles were there because they had agreed to be the Tiger Den leaders for 24 or 25 of the unruliest first grade boys I had ever seen. Uh, I was glad that I only had six second graders and, and they were pretty calm. Uh, this is our scouting home here in Maumel, First United Methodist Church, and um, the only room big enough in this facility to hold said Tiger Scouts was this room. We just basically put them in the gym and hoped they didn't get out. Um, but Dave and, and Chuck and Eddie and Kelly and they, Brandy, they they worked to try to uh, teach those boys the, the aims of scouting. Um, when it got a little out of hand, Dave always had a plan. There was duct tape. Now, as I'm the current Cub Scout leader, I can't honestly or in good conscience say whether any scouts were ever taped to a wall, but they always knew the risk was there. Ian Blackburn, I'm looking at you. All right. Um, Dave was a scout himself. 
he lived a scouting life. He uh, wanted his boys to be good citizens. He wanted them to be healthy and strong and learn about the outdoors and the ways of doing things. Uh, he contributed in various roles over the years, uh, even through a lot of transitions in his life. Uh, Kelly served as our uh, committee chair one year, she and I, when I was first cup master, and uh, we spent a lot of time building scouting here in the community, and, and they were a part of that and a big part of that, and so I'm grateful for that. Even after Dave kind of stepped away from it, he was still involved. He was always there uh, for Pinewood Derby um, in what is kind of a Dave way. Uh, you didn't just glue weights on your Pinewood Derby cars. He would melt lead shot with the boys. And I'm thinking, oof, you know, I'm not that brave. But, but that, was, that was kind of his way is, is that there had to be a little risk involved. And, and you'd learn through that. But he was patient enough to to help boys through that uh, and and so I'm grateful for that um, more recently um, I got to know Dave a little more closely um, as Susanna came into his life um, Susanna and my wife uh, were longtime friends and so that kind of closed a circle for us and, and having them in the church uh, was also, I, I looked forward to a long friendship with Dave. Uh, as I said, he was a scout growing up. Uh, he made it to Life Scout, which is uh, a, a quite an achievement. And he was also uh, in a scouting honor society called the Order of the Arrow. And in the order, um, there is a broken arrow ceremony that honors uh, arrow men, as they are called, that uh, have passed on. And part of the ceremony reads, Rest, brother, we've known you well indeed, and now in peace you'll sleep. You have done your work and done it well, so not, none of us need weep. Rest well, Dave. Thank you. Beloved, our scripture readings begin with the with Psalm ninety, verse twelve. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Romans 12, beginning with the ninth verse, says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of a low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge and I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And finally, beloved, our gospel reading is from John 14, selected verses. These are the words of Jesus Christ. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back, and I will take you with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place I am going. Thomas, one of Jesus' disciples, said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. And in verse 15, Jesus continues, and he says, If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him because he lives in you and he will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me, and because I live, you also will live. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. And may God bless us as we absorb and consider his holy word. What can we say about David Jarrett? There is so much to say. I enjoyed talking with Nancy and Weldon about David. And as his parents, they were filled with memories at this time Nancy shared about a sand pit in the backyard with G.I. Joes and with a water hose that could make all kinds, of, uh, all kinds of obstacles for those faithful and brave G.I. Joe soldiers to overcome when Dave was a child. I got to see uh, pictures of a nice-looking teenager who was taking girls to dances, the pride and joy of his parents. I got to hear about the dedicated and diligent young man that started as a teenager the Lawn Rangers Lawn Care business. You can hear that sense of humor there, Lawn Rangers, and uh, all the hard work that he put into that. And as an adult, Dave has been a man that they could be proud of, and Nancy says Dave was her rock. As a father, we know that Dave delighted in his sons, Grayson and Zane and Blake. He was so very proud of you, so proud to, uh, to have you in his life and to see all the things you're doing and learning and the ways you're growing. And he was always talking to his mom and his friends, thinking about ways to better and further his children, working with Susanna and with Kelly for the good of these boys. And took them on great trips. The boys remember Disney World and the Great Wolf Lodge. Uh, there were there were times to shoot hoops. There were uh, there were there was sense of humor and fun injected into his parenting. And the neighbors remember and watch as these boys grow to be respectful young men that remind them of Dave, because Dave was that kind of a person. In his work with scouting, he and Kelly were active and committed, as you heard earlier. And I, I remember talking with him a little bit about martial arts for the boys. And um, the boys have had loving homes because of Dave's love. He and Susanna have provided them a great home, and Kelly's provided them a great home. And uh, they're going to continue to have so many people. You will continue to have so many people cheering you on and loving you and supporting you through all that is ahead and that's how he would want it. As a husband, 
what can be said. I, I, uh, John so beautifully read The Art of Marriage for us earlier. That was a reading from their wedding, and it showed how Dave chose to approach marriage, his, his love uh, for Susanna, his, how he was so considerate and so caring and uh, kind and easy, uh, easy to live with and eager to serve. Dave was an informal person, but he was still a gentleman through and through um, and uh, a delight uh, and uh, Susanna calls him her soulmate, and uh, their home was a haven of joy and peace, as it says in our wedding liturgy, may your home be a haven of joy and peace. Their home was that. And um, uh, co-workers remember him. They remember loving to talk with him and go to lunch with him. They remember that he was the one who rejoiced with those who rejoiced and mourned with those who mourned. He was always ready with a listening ear and with a hug. Uh, Dave was the kind of guy at work that he looked toward the needs of the people around him, and he had an eye toward ways he could prosper people who were deserving that maybe others would not notice so that there are people who hold positions today that they would not have held if Dave had not had his eye out for them and made sure they got uh, the next position. Uh, Even if that meant that somebody in his workforce would have to be replaced, he had to make sure that people got to where they needed to be. There are people that have a better life today because of Dave's approach to his work and his desire to better others. People remember that sense of humor that dry sense of humor. He was always looking for ways to do kind things for others, and maybe sometimes there was a a little gentle and loving teasing in the midst of that kindness. Uh, One of his neighbors from way back remembers that uh, when their opposing teams would win in a game, there might be a note that would appear on the front door, uh, a little bit of jabbing about whose team won. Um, As a neighbor... Uh, Dave and, and together with Susanna, they, they made their home a place that was like a neighborhood hub. People would come over. Uh, there was food. There was maybe a little maker's mark. There was, uh, there was fun and laughter and joy, and all the kids could come over. They'd come over still even if Grayson and Zane and Blake are not at home. There are still kids running in and out of the home. And David, of course, was the s'more maker extraordinaire. (laughs) There's so much that could be said, and I have heard story after story about David's kindness and his love and his gentleness and his goodness and how fun he was just to have around. He could, in a very gracious way, make himself at home in your home because you would want him there as soon as he walked in. I first remember uh, Dave and Susanna coming to church during COVID with their wedding masks on, the masks from their wedding reception. They're wearing them, they walk in, and uh, once those masks came off in a few more weeks, uh, David was grinning, and I don't know that I ever saw him but what he was grinning. He always had a smile on his face, and he was always ready to meet people and uh, to make friends, uh, to welcome people. He was just a great presence uh, everywhere he went. And, and as a pastor, I mourn the good that I know we would have gotten to do together side by side and the fun we would have had in doing it. Um, as he is gone from our presence and yet in our hearts, we are full of questions. And beloved, I would expect that most of you have more questions than answers in this time. And what I want to tell you is that I, too, have more questions than answers. There are things that this side of heaven we just don't know. We don't know why Dave's life had to be so short. Um, I I tell people, and I I do believe that I, I can't quite accept that God sends death to people I think it's more that God welcomes his children home when death comes to them. We live in a broken world and things happen to our bodies that we can't always understand or explain and we can't even always find the why of things happening to us. But we have a God that brings new life out of the the reality of our deaths. Death is so... um, separated from us in the world where we live today. We live in a first world country. There are people all around the world 
that uh, are threatened each day because they don't have safe drinking water, they don't have safe places to live. We're sitting here today in this uh, heated room with padded chairs while there are people in the Ukraine, uh, younger than me for sure, fighting for the, their very lives and for their nation's freedom. There are people for whom death is a constant companion, and this is just not our life experience. This is completely foreign to us. And for one who's 49 years old to pass away um, so unexpectedly, it is a complete shock. And there's no platitudes that is going to make that feel more normal. We just have to live in the shock of it. And so I don't know why this happened, but I do think I can tell you a little bit about what God does in the face of these kinds of tragedies and losses. Um, in David, we see a powerful witness about God's love. Um, I know there are probably people here today that are very uncomfortable with religion. And, and first of all, I want to tell you that uh, on behalf of the family, I know that they are especially touched that you are here. All of our friends and family, it's wonderful that everybody is here today. Uh, but those of you for whom worship is an uncomfortable experience, we are especially moved that you are here and that you made the effort to come and do something that's a little different for you. Um, some of us have grown up with the notion that God is full of anger and wrath and hate, and then those that know differently have to spend their lives trying to help others see that God is really love. If you knew Dave, you saw something of the Father's love for you. That sure and certain friendship that was able to celebrate your successes and overlook your failings in such a gentle and loving way, that is an echo of God's love for each one of you. That forgiveness when mistakes were made and wrongs were done, that is an echo of the grace and love that God wants to show each one of you. And if it seems like that, uh, that, that religious people are a little stiff or somehow uh, unwelcoming or something like that, or that there's so many do's and don'ts that there's a narrowness to the experience of faith, I want you to think about David and all of his friends gathered over at the house and, and just consider that perhaps that wasn't so different than Jesus hanging out with his 12 closest friends at weddings uh, where that water was turned into wine and uh, that, those, that those days of making s'mores, that's not so different than when Jesus gathered children to his knee. Beloved, God is love. And people who know God uh, live in that love, and you saw that love in David's life. That is who God is, and that is the life message David leaves with us. I always say everybody preaches their own funeral. That's the life message David leaves with us. As we consider what we do next and how we continue to honor Dave in our daily lives, how we, continue to be, how we continue to be faithful to the love and the witness that he showed all of us, I want to suggest a few things. For one thing, I want to tell you that we don't have any idea how his death could have been prevented, but any time someone's life seems to have been cut short, it calls all of us to look at our health in a new way. You have been putting off your physical, why not schedule it on Monday morning, call the doctor in honor of Dave and with new appreciation for the fact that life is short. Schedule that physical. My mother died unexpectedly. I can't tell you how many people's lives were saved because they chose to go get the physical. They chose to start taking the medicine that they'd been balking at. They chose to realize that life is short and precious, and that it's not a gift we take for granted. Go get the physical, okay? The other thing I want to tell you is be at peace with the people around you. That Romans 12 passage that I read, I chose because it's just like Dave. As far as it depends upon you, be at peace with all people. You can't fight with somebody who just won't fight with you, you know? 
and Dave wanted to be at peace with people. He wanted to approach life with love and a sense of humor and let go of grudges and so forth. You can be that person and so can I. For some of us, it doesn't come so naturally, but think about how much more special of a gift it is to God and to our friends when we choose to try to give that gift anyway, even if it's a little bit against our grain. Be at peace with the people around you. Love people. Choose to associate with people and to welcome everyone as a friend, as Dave did. It's a great way to live our lives. People have told me, they said, you know, you, I don't envy your job. I hate to think of having to preach uh, a funeral for somebody who has died so young. Well, it, it is hard to preach a funeral for somebody when we, we wish that there were more things they could have known and experienced. It's really terrible to preach a funeral for somebody who's nearing 100 and seemed to have lived a life of anger toward everyone around them and did not know and love the Lord. David packed more love into his life in those 49 years than a lot of people pack into a much longer lifetime. Live in love. Live in love. And if there are those here who do have spiritual questions and uh, of faith questions of any kind, I want you to understand that whether you ever come to this church again or not, I want to be here for you. You are welcome to call the church, message me on Facebook, message me through the church's Facebook page. I want to be here for you and answer any questions or talk through any questions that you have, help you in any way I can. Because it does behoove us to think about where our lives are going. And in these moments when tragedy strikes, it just reminds us that Jesus really is our only hope in the face of death. He is our only hope. He is the life raft in the midst of fading away. He is the way to the Father, the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to help anybody who has any questions about that. There is nothing you can say that will offend me or will upset me. I want to be here for you. Okay? And there are other pastors in the community that would say exactly the same thing. There are practical things to be done. We're going to continue to love and support these three boys. There's a basketball goal that needs to go up at Susanna's house. Uh, there are there are things that, uh, there are things that uh, Kelly and the boys are going to need, and uh, friends and family are going to support you. The church family is going to support you. We are going to be your family. And there's going to be life lessons all around of how to live and to grow up and to be like Dave. We're going to do that for you. Um, we're going to continue to love and support one another in the days ahead. There's big shoes to fill and it's going to take the whole room and people watching online today to fill them. And that is our calling. Thanks be to God for David Wesley Jarrett. Thanks be to God for a great witness. Thanks be to God for a life well lived. Thanks be to God for countless lessons in love and service and kindness. Thanks be to God for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that brings him to the fullness of the kingdom of heaven and joins all who believe right with him so that there will be a joyous reunion with the Lord Jesus and with Dave, with his grin and his, his welcoming arms. It's the good news in the midst of this sad time. Let's pray. Gracious God, help us to trust you. Help us to trust you when we don't understand. Help us to trust you when we're sad and weary. Help us to trust you and to celebrate you. Help us to be people who are able to find the good in the midst of bad. Help us to be people who are able to celebrate you in the midst of life's storms. We pray, God, that our lives would be a witness to your faithfulness and love, that our lives would radiate your love as Dave's life did, we thank you for his life that was ours for a time and will always be yours. And we thank you for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ who makes it possible for us to come to you, to be a part of your family, to receive your comfort and the power of your Holy Spirit, and ultimately to receive a reunion with all we love who live with you in the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, 
we offer you honor and glory, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Praise the hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. of me I raise a hallelujah I will watch the darkness flee I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery I raise a hallelujah Fear you've lost your hold on me I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise, death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder, sing a little louder, sing a little louder. 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 In the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. praises roar up from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder you're gonna hear my praises roar up 
from the ashes hope will arise death is defeated the king is alive Beloved, in a moment, I'm going to invite you to stand to receive the benediction, and I'm going to escort the family out while everyone else remains here. They're going to form a line in the lobby to greet anyone who would like to greet them as you go off uh, and uh, go about your day. For those who would like to remain and reminisce about David with the family, there is going to be a reception here once that receiving line has closed. On behalf of the family, thank you for being here today, and your prayers and your love make an incredible impact. Please stand. I'm going to share with you the benediction that we typically do share at weddings because I do think that it really, um, it, it really does uh, hold a lot of the things that we know and feel about David. As you go forth, I ask you to bear witness to the love of God in this world so that those who do not know love will find in you good and generous friends. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the constant fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the love of God the Father be with you now and always. Amen.